Hello everyone, this is Mr. Burke. We're going to review the subtopic 11.4 for sexual reproduction. This is the higher level topic. The essential idea here is that sexual reproduction does involve the development and fusion of haploid gametes. So we're going into more detail about how that actually happens and how does it differ in the development of sperm versus the development of eggs. In order to understand more about fertilization of egg and sperm, you also need to know more about the structure of both sperm and eggs. The IB does want you to be able to annotate diagrams of both sperm and eggs and their major structures and functions. So the best way to learn how to annotate something is actually to be able to draw it first and then you'll be able to pick out the parts and describe what they each do. So we can start with the sperm. Okay, on the head of the sperm, the front part of it, you have this piece called the acrosome. You also have the nucleus right there, and that is a haploid nucleus, meaning only 23 chromosomes, half the number of your normal body cells, which would have 46 chromosomes. And then um, it's worth noting too that this acrosome contains enzymes to break down the zona pellucida on the egg. That helps it to get into the egg, get its genetic material into the egg. Okay, over here in the mid piece, this is called the mid piece, There are mitochondria. Why are the mitochondria there? To produce ATP energy. For what? For movement. Because the movement of the sperm is going to require a lot of energy. So that's why we need that mitochondria there. This is the tail. It's composed of strong fibers and microtubules. So there you have it. Those are the main pieces of the sperm and their general function. As for the egg, we're going to start with the circle. This is just going to be the plasma membrane. Okay, you do have the nucleus inside, just like with sperm. Contains 23 chromosomes. Okay, this is a haploid number, so it's a haploid nucleus, okay, and then 
got some other structures here, like the Zona Pellucida. I'm going to make that thicker. So Zona Pellucida. Goes around the plasma membrane. It's a thick covering that provides protection. So this was the thing that we were talking about that the sperm is going to be breaking through, right, with the help of the acrosome that contains those enzymes. Okay. Okay, and the zona pellucida, it provi provides protection for the egg inside. Okay, you've got these little things around here inside the plasma membrane called the cortical granules. And these are pretty important for preventing something called polyspermy. Okay, so when the sperm does try to enter the zona pellucida, once one sperm does get through and releases its genetic material inside the cytoplasm of the egg, it um, stimulates these cortical granules to then be exported out of the cell and it, they interact with the zona pellucida and those cortical granules then make the zona pellucida very hard, which prevents other sperm from entering into the egg because we only want one sperm with its 23 chromosomes to be entering into the egg. Okay, so. Okay, you've got these other things around here on the outside of the cell called follicles. These contain structures that help the development of the early egg. Okay, and then don't forget, this was the plasma membrane. Right, that's helping to protect and allow for transport in and out of the egg, transport of materials. And then here we've just got, this is just gonna be the cytoplasm. Okay, but it does contain nutrients to support development of the egg. Now that we've got the structures of both the male gametes, the sperm or spermatozoa down, as well as the structure of the eggs or the ova for the female gametes, we're going to talk about how are they created and how are those processes of creation of each of, of, each of those gametes similar and how are they different. So the process of creation of sperm is called spermatogenesis process of creation of eggs is called oogenesis. 
Both do involve mitosis, cell growth, two divisions of meiosis, and differentiation. However, within those processes, there are some major differences. Okay, processes in spermatogenesis and oogenesis do result in different numbers of gametes being created with different amounts of cytoplasm. These are this is some of the biggest differences right there between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So you can remember sp spermatogenesis is the creation of sperm because remember genesis means creation of something and oogenesis is creation of eggs. So oocytes, right, are eggs. I'm going to start by talking about the structures involved with spermatogenesis. So it is going to be occurring within the testes of the male reproductive organs. And so this is a zoom in cross section of the testes over here. Okay, these are the different cells involved with this. So you have your interstitial cells, okay, that are sort of on the just the outside of the testes and that's going to be helping to produce testosterone okay spermatogonia are the cells that are going to be producing the spermatocytes you've got sertoli cells which are cells that are just dedicated to nourishing with nutrients the developing spermatozoa okay then you've got your developing spermatozoa which are almost complete sperm cells at that point. The spermatogonia, by the way, are the sort of parent cells because when you make gametes, you do need these parent cells that have the full number of chromosomes that then reproduce to make the cells that are going to continue to divide and produce those gametes. So the cells that are undergoing mitosis are going to be the spermatogonia. Because remember, in the statement, both spermatogenesis and oogenesis do involve mitosis, and that's where the mitosis is involved, is with the spermatogonia, the parent cells. And why do they need to keep reproducing? Because we need more of these parent cells in order to continue to make more of these gametes. Over here, you'll notice that you do have to annotate diagrams of the seminiferous tubule and ovary to show the stages of gametogenesis. So gametogenesis is, remember, genesis creation, so creation of gametes. Spermatogenesis is creation of sperm. Oogenesis, creation of eggs. So we're gonna be talking more about the creation of sperm and how does that actually happen. So it happens all within these seminiferous tubules in the male testes for sperm, and then happens in the ovaries for eggs. So these are the tubes within the testes, and if you have a cross section of the tube, you can see that there is a lumen of the tube, this sort of empty space. That's where the, the sperm end up being released into, and then eventually the sperm do make it out of the seminiferous tubules, right, up into the vas deferens later. Okay, so if you remember, the interstitial cells are on the outside of the seminiferous tubule here, and those are going to be helping to cause differentiation of these sperm cells, of the gametes. Spermatogonia, remember, are like these parent cells that do have to undergo mitosis to make exact replicas of themselves so that those cells can then go on to make the sperm cells through meiosis at that point. Go ahead and practice labeling and annotating these micrographs of the seminiferous tubules. So just as a hint before you start labeling, this is the outer part of the tubule. This is another part, outer part of another piece of the tubule and over here as well. And so then this is gonna be the inside. This is the lumen over here. And remember, along the outside of the tubule, what should you have? Okay. And then on the actual outside of the tubule, what should you have? Okay. And then as you work in closer to the lumen, what should you have? So you can go ahead and label using these, and I will show the answers on the next slide. And here we have the answers.
Okay, the interstitial cells are on the outside, that's producing testosterone, aiding in specialization of these gametes. Then you've got the spermatogonia, remember the parent cells that are going through mitosis, okay, because those cells need to be dividing and making copies of themselves so that they can then move on to go through meiosis to produce the spermatogonia, which are the primary spermatocytes, okay. And then you've also got your Sertoli cells, which are nourishing the developing spermatozoa. At that point, they would be secondary spermatocytes, the developing spermatozoa. spermatozoa. And then you've got the developing spermatozoa continuing to develop into almost complete sperm cells. These are known as spermatids. So before they're spermatozoa or sperm cells, they are sperma spermatids. Okay, now to test your knowledge about that information with the seminiferous tubules, you can try to answer this question. So the diagram shows a section through the seminiferous tubules. What is the cell labeled X? Okay, you can pause here and then I will tell you the answer. Okay, so the answer would be the Sertoli cell that provides nutrients. And why is it going to be the Sertoli cell that provides nutrients? Well, it is not a spermatid that will differentiate into a sperm because that would be more like these cells right here. These spermatids, remember, are almost full sperm or spermatozoa. And these do look like that. This cell that it's pointing to does not look like a sperm at all. So it's not A primary spermatocyte that will undergo meiosis to, per, to form secondary spermatocytes. So you can also see that the primary spermatocyte would probably not be this cell because it's not pointing at anything um, looking like a spermatocyte at all. But you can see that this cell that it's pointing to is surrounding the spermatids, right? And so you can see it's almost like helping in the development of the spermatid, and that's what those Sertoli cells do. They provide nutrients to the developing spermatids, right? Okay, it's also not going to be a stem cell that divides by mitosis to sp form spermatogonia because those would be more over here, like at the basement cells right here. Okay, this primary spermatocytes would be maybe these cells over here that are undergoing meiosis. Just another question over here to help you practice again. The image shows a section of a seminiferous tubule. What is shown by letter X? Okay, and you do have to differentiate and you have to look very closely here at what is happening. So you can see that this isn't going to be mitosis. Remember, mitosis would be happening over here with the spermatogonia at the basement of the seminiferous tubule. So it is, in fact, going to be meiosis. Okay, but is it going to be meiosis one, meiosis two, meiosis one in a primary spermatocyte, meiosis two in a secondary, or is a spermatid undergoing meiosis? Well, spermatids wouldn't be undergoing meiosis, so we can rule that out. It also doesn't look like a spermatid over here. So it's either meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. And in fact, it is going to be meiosis 1 because you can see that these are homologous chromosomes being separated out. Okay, so they do have that X shape to them, and the homologous pairs of chromosomes each would be an X that would be separating out, right? An X shape separating to either side of the cell. And then the second round of meiosis, which would be meiosis 2, would be happening in secondary spermatocyte, but it would look more like lines, not X's, but lines that are being separated. It would be an X shape that is being pulled apart and then the two lines would be separating out to either side of the cell.